Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Move Me Back series. Today I have an extra, extra special guest with me today. I have with me Mr. Frimpong, who is going to share a little bit of his experience of Ghana with you all. And I'm so super excited to talk to him today. So, Mr. Frimpong, perhaps you could introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are. My name is K.D. Frimpong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Retired Director of Engineering in Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. Mm -hmm. Before that, yes. I was working with British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC in London. Right. Okay. 1970. Wow. Wow. 1970. I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I came to Ghana mm -hmm. in 1974. Yeah. Joined the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. Mm -hmm. Became the director of engineering. Yeah. When I came to Ghana, mm -hmm. the television then was called black and white. There was no color television in this country. Yeah. We had one in our house, I remember. When I was very small, we had one black and white TV. And it was just like, that's what I knew, you know. So I'm glad you're talking about black and white TV. <laughs> yeah, it happened, right? Yeah. Mm. So there was no color television in this country. Right. Now, the government then wanted to transit mm -hmm. Ghana from black and white to oh, color yeah. television. Mm -hmm. So a committee was set up. Okay. And now, you were part of that committee? I was the head of head, that committee. Right. Because I was the only person in Ghana mm -hmm. who has worked with BBC. Right. Because BBC was operating color television. Mm -hmm. So when I came to Ghana, yeah. I knew about color television. Right. So I became a head so, of the committee. So you were like the first person to actually bring color TV to Ghana. Exactly. So in 1984, mm -hmm. I led a team of engineers and technicians to Tokyo, okay. Japan, right, to study color television. Mm -hmm. uh, the company which won the tender mm -hmm. to supply equipment for color television in Ghana was called NEC, okay. NEC, NEC, of, uh, NEC of Japan. Okay. Yeah. So I led this team to Japan. Mm -hmm. We learned about color television. We came back and we started tendering for the equipment. Mm -hmm. Work started in 1985. Okay. To convert all the black and white equipment. Mm -hmm. to color television. We completed the work in 1986. Mm -hmm. The first color television signal mm -hmm. to be transmitted in this country mm -hmm. was on 5th March 1986. Oh. But officially, mm -hmm. we made it on the 6th because this is the uh, independence. independence. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. But the first color television signal to be transmitted was on the 5th of March 1986. Right. I miss so you. You didn't have to actually change every TV over. Nobody had to like throw away their TV and buy a new TV in order to get color. No, no. You see, uh, once the color television has come, yeah. if you've got black and white, mm -hmm. you can still receive uh, your oh. pictures alright in black and white. Oh, okay. That's right. okay. But of course, people like color. Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. People yeah. start buying their mm -hmm. color television. Right, yeah. right. Uh, as time went on. I see. You know, the reason I made sure that uh, the, the unofficial signal will be transmitted uh, mm -hmm. on the 5th of March. Yeah. Because 5th, 5th March is my birthday. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so you orchestrated it so that we're on your birthday. That's how you remember. <laughs> That's right. But officially, officially, mm -hmm. we announced that yeah. the television will be, uh, the color television is on the 6th March mm -hmm. so, to coincide with the independence anniversary. Right. That's right. So you had one in your house? Television, color? Color, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's color television, mm -hmm. that's right. When we went to Japan, mm -hmm. we returned, we, we, we came with uh, color television. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, almost all the staff uh, had color television. Otherwise, how can we monitor? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. very true. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was the buzz behind the color television coming here? What, what, what was people's responses to seeing color television? Okay, we had no choice because the world <laughs> was going color. Mm. And... We don't manufacture equipment. Yeah. We buy from manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And if you go to buy 
equipment and its color. Mm -hmm. What do you do? I mean, yeah. you, you buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, the best thing is to convert all your mm. black and white to color television. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, to, to coincide with what the, mm. the rest of the world is doing. Yeah. yeah. So people were pretty responsive to receiving the oh, color television. Oh, of course. Television. I mean, everybody was anxious. I mean, yeah. enthusiastic to see color television. Yeah. If you've been watching uh, black and white mm -hmm. and suddenly you see color, it, yeah. Yeah, it's a vast difference. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, scrambling to buy, you yeah. know, discarding their color television, uh, sorry, their black and white television mm. and buying mm. their color television. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Okay, so since that time, have you seen, so do you live in Ghana now? You're here for good? Sure, sure. Since I came, I, I live in Ghana. Okay, mm. okay. Yeah. So have you seen a lot of changes apart from like the whole color television? Have you seen the, a lot of development in Ghana since that time? Sure, in terms of what? I mean... It, in terms of... Um, the development of the country, like buildings coming up, infrastructure coming in, that type of thing. Oh, certainly, certainly. There's mm. no doubt about that. I mean, there, there, yeah. there's no doubt about it. Um, this uh, uh, motorway, for instance, yeah. um, <laughs> mm. is one of the development in, in Ghana. And yeah. uh, people don't see things, but really, mm. from my standpoint of view, yeah. from where, before I left Ghana, mm -hmm. incidentally, when I went to United Kingdom, yeah, that time you couldn't go to United Kingdom with uh, aeroplane. You have to go to go by ship. Really? I left Ghana. Okay. In 1958. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was no aeroplane. Wow. <laughs> to take you to Britain. That so didn't you, even cross my mind. Yeah, we go by ship, and uh, oh. the shipping company was called the Thames Alliance. Right. In Takradi. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I took my ship from Takradi. Wow. Went to Liverpool, mm -hmm. I took a train to London, and my wow. friends took me home. So how long would it take to travel by ship? Oh, two weeks. Two weeks? Mm. And what was it like being on that ship <laughs> and traveling? I mean, did you like get seasick? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's an experience. <laughs> I wish everybody would have the mm. opportunity to travel, uh, go uh, on, on the sea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a sort of an excursion. Mm. From Ghana yeah. to uh, Britain, mm -hmm. uh, this, the port was Liverpool. Yeah. From Ghana to Europe, mm -hmm. North Africa, somewhere there, mm -hmm. there's a place called Bay of Biscay. Okay. Bay of Biscay. Very, very rough. Mm. Very, very rough. In terms of. And what? I remember when you got there, mm -hmm. the sea was so rough. Oh. That when you went to the dining hall, mm -hmm. the ship rolled over and everything on the dining table fell down. Wow. So that day we didn't have any meal. Wow. That's how rough it was. But it was exciting. Mm, you weren't because, scared? Yeah, but, but you can see the seagulls yeah. following the ship. Mm -hmm. Everything that is thrown to the sea, they were picking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was an experience, you know. So was that your first time on the sea? Yeah, 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 my first on the sea. Wow. And I, that's why every time I enjoyed it. Mm. I enjoyed it. Now, nowadays, if you go into, go into Britain, mm -hmm. within six hours, you are there. Exactly. What do you see? Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the sky, the clouds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm. So when you landed in the UK, what was your experience? <laughs> <I mean, laughs> you are laughing. Those days they call something JJC. Yes, Johnny jo just come. Yeah, so, uh -huh. <laughs> so you can, of course, you can see. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot. Yeah. My friend took me uh, to, I mean, to, took me home, and everything was new to me. Yeah. The first time I saw television mm -hmm. was in the UK. Yeah. And uh, you know, my colleagues were mock, uh, making fun of me. Mm -hmm. Because, in fact, there was no television in Ghana in yeah. 1958. Wow. But there was television in Britain mm. called Black and White. So, yeah. You know, so everything was quite different, you know, mm. quite different, yeah. What was the biggest shock for you being in the UK? What was the, the thing that you saw there and you were like, wow, this is different? Well, unfortunately, uh, I landed in the UK mm -hmm. in the, uh, December. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I think, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I spent the Christmas at sea. Yeah. So we got to Liverpool around about 2nd or 3rd January. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen snow before. Right, right. So imagine from the tropics. Yeah, <laughs> to the snow. 
That's right. Mm -hmm. And I was wearing an ordinary shirt. Mm -hmm. you know, and I felt it. Yeah. Bet. If I had a chance, maybe I'll, I'll come back to Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shock. Uh, yeah, the, the really sugar. cold, right? No, the biggest shock I had. Wow. But uh, in January, mm -hmm. then February, the weather started changing. Yeah. So I started enjoying the place. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, so comparing the two places, if you had choice, if going back to that time, if you had choice, would you have preferred to be in Ghana or in the UK? Oh, okay, do this. If um, they had universities in Ghana, and you know, maybe I would have stayed in Ghana to do my studies, but mm. I had no choice but to go to UK. Mm. But when I go there, I like the place. Yeah. So, of course, th that time they didn't have a comparison, but mm. I got there. Yeah. And later, mm -hmm. I found the opportunities uh, there mm -hmm. in, in terms of uh, education. Yeah. You can study anything you want to study, mm. you know. If you are really yeah, uh, this thing. You know? mm. So I, I'm, I'm glad that I went to UK. Yeah, uh, yeah. just so, to broaden my knowledge. Yeah. So what what was what was the decision factor in you going to the UK? What what really made you go? Because uh, those days, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, education system was not expanded. Mm. Now, uh, people I mean, I'm talking about young people in Ghana now. Yeah. They are blessed. How many universities in Ghana? Yeah. Schools, yeah. everything. Mm. Those days you could count the secondary schools mm -hmm. on your fingertips. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Well, five. You know? Wow. Therefore, you have no chance mm. of progressing in terms of education. Right. We had um, San Seven. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know what they call it. Okay. Classes or whatever, I don't know. But mm -hmm. those days it's of course San Seven. That's where you, you finish your elementary yeah. education. Mm -hmm. Once you finish that, there's no chance of going to secondary school again. Wow. So your education is finished right. at that point. And I was so anxious to further my education that I worked and saved. Really? I went to UK too. So I went to UK to do my mm. O-level, A-level and enter university to do my wow. engineering degree. So how much did it cost you to actually go to the UK? Because you, you mentioned that you saved. How much did you have to save in order to go back then? That time, I was able to save one thousand pounds. Wow! So when I got to UK, wow! I arranged with my bank, and they transferred the money to me in mm -hmm. UK. This is where I started all over again. Wow! Yeah. And was and, it mm. was it fairly easy for you to get a job once you were there? Well, I started my full time when I was doing my O level and A level. Mm -hmm. But when I entered into university uh, during the holidays, then I do the all jobs. Right, you go okay. to factories and do any kind of job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're just doing what you could to get by, That's right? right? Yeah, I did full time. Mm. Only I work during the holidays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So what would you say to somebody who is in Ghana and perhaps thinks that everything, you know, in the West is very easy, you know, if you want to achieve things, you have to go to the West. What do you think of that now at this point? Well, see, People got that uh, misconception that uh, maybe the West is like heaven or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If you, as a person, yeah. you don't have the ambition to mm -hmm. do something, yeah. if you couldn't do it in Ghana, how yeah. are you going to do it in West? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, only when you don't have the opportunity or yeah. the chance to do it here, then yeah. maybe you go out to do it. Mm. As I said, if I had opportunity to go to secondary school and then university here. Why, why should I go to Britain? Right, right. But because I didn't have it. I yeah. had to go there. Mm, mm, mm. If I hadn't gone there, there was no way I could have done my O and level because I finished my son seven mm -hmm. uh, elementary school. <laughs> no secondary yeah. school would admit you once you finish your son seven in those days. Wow. You know? wow. So I have to go. But now, mm. giving the same uh, point, I'll do it here. Mm. I'll go to. Of course, I go to the West holidays or whatever it is. Yeah. But if I can study, study what I want to study in Ghana here, why should I go to mm, uh, mm. the UK to, to, to yeah, do it? Yeah, yeah. No, that's a very, very good point. Mm. So what do you think about a lot of diasporans now trying to move to Ghana? Those that want to, who have like their parents 
went to the UK, they had children in the UK and want to bring them, and those children now want to come back to Ghana. What do you think of that whole kind of movement that's happening? UK hmm. and Ghana, hmm. if you live there so long and you come to Ghana, you come here, you find that that kind of freedom, mm -hmm. yeah. regimented sort of life in UK, you go mm -hmm. to work, you do that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Here, yeah. everything is mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. And we are sitting here. Mm -hmm. Why are you telling me, tell me UK that you can get this uh, <laughs> fresh air, uh, breeze, and yes. we're talking about? Yeah. Why are you going to get this face? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But of course, people are curious. Once they don't, they haven't seen the UK, they want to go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or don't blame them. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if you live there and you have the opportunity to come back, mm -hmm. you think that you're in paradise yeah. when you're in Ghana. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's mm -hmm. true. I've been here myself like eight years now. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't think you could pay me to go back. <laughs> you couldn't. No, I absolutely love it here because there are so many opportunities. There's so many things here that just present themselves yes, that yes. being here is just like, it's the future. Yeah. You know, I always tell people that, that if you really want to understand your life and you mm. want to do something for yourself, it has to be here because mm. you have so many opportunities right yeah. in front of you. You can literally do what you want. It's yeah. up to you, as you said earlier, you know. Yeah. You motivate yourself to do what you want to do yeah. and you can most definitely do it here. Yeah. Whereas in the yeah. West, it's a lot harder yeah. because you have a lot of red tape around you. But here, yeah. there it is, you know, take your opportunity. So yeah. Yeah. that's really, really good. It, 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 one thing though, mm -hmm. there are more things to learn. Mm -hmm. Duke, I'm talking about courses being offered in universities. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And once you're a serious student yeah. and you have some aim and ambition, and mm -hmm. you find that you like it there. Okay. See, when I was my final year, mm -hmm. uh, BBC, they used to go around uh, to, to interview final year students. I was interviewed, mm -hmm. and BBC yeah. recruited me as an engineer. Wow. That's why I came to broadcast industry. Mm -hmm. But this is one of the advantages, being yeah. in the UK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I learned a lot, yeah. you know, and I gained a lot. Mm -hmm. so, this is one of the advantages. Yeah. Sometimes you will be here, maybe you finish your education, but finding a job. You it's know. tough, right? Yeah, mm. there's some difficulties. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Absolutely. Wow. So you enjoyed your time while you were in the UK? Oh, yes, yes, mm, yes, yes. Mm. Later, when I, as I said, you finish, initially, there was a problem. <laughs> as I said, when I got to Liverpool, yeah. came out of the ship, mm -hmm. took a train to London, yeah. and I wish I could come back to Ghana. Really? The cold that hit me. <laughs> <laughs> it's no joke. But later, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, in the summer, and then I started doing my education, yeah. and finally finishing and being recruited by BBC to work mm. as an engineer, and I started enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. So in that case, I would say that I gained more by going to UK by, mm -hmm. if, if I hadn't gone there, I would know where I could have got this experience mm -hmm. to Absolutely. work for BBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, mm. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's really good. How many years were you in the UK for? Oh, I went there 58 and uh, I came to Ghana in 74. Okay. Yeah. So, just as a final question, what advice would you give somebody that wants to move to Ghana, like now. He wants to live. Come oh. move to Ghana. They're in the West oh. and they want to move to Ghana. They to want to come to Ghana. Yeah, that's right. Uh, prepare well in the sense that you save some money. Yeah. And if you come to Ghana, mm -hmm. you have the competitive edge mm -hmm. because you know something there which you can bring back to Ghana. Yes. yes. And once you have the capital here, mm -hmm. I mean, it's easy. Look. Yes. To set up a business in the UK, mm -hmm. it's a tough, everybody's doing it. Oh, so yeah, yeah. there's a lot of competition. Yeah, yeah, but here in Ghana, mm -hmm. you can come and set a lot of business mm -hmm. yeah. know, with less competition. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you feel free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, yeah. So I advise people, you know, mm. move back, come back to Ghana. Yeah. Well, there you go, guys. You've heard it from Mr. Frimpong himself. He's had a really good balance of seeing both the UK and seeing Ghana as well. So his advice is absolutely invaluable. Um, so I hope you've taken note of what he said in today's video. OK, guys, but I'm going to wrap up there. I've really enjoyed my time speaking to you. So thank you so much for 
taking out some time in your day to spend a few minutes with me. So I appreciate that very much. Good pressure. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, if you haven't already subscribed, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button for me and the notification bell. And don't forget to like, comment and share this video for me. Until next time, I am out. Nutifafa.